Here we go, guys. Calvin from the Catching Company down under in New Zealand. So I've got a couple of things to explain. But today we're going to discuss my universal loops and what I do and, and how I do it. And the process. So if you're considering getting one of my universal looms, this might help you a bit to explain what I do. Now, even though I call them a, a universal loom, and it makes it sound like they're all the same, it's not always quite the case. I'm working with the customer's loom. So the first thing I need is the customer, you who's one of your loom done, you send me the wiring loom off your engine and hopefully it's going to match with your engine okay so it plugs in correctly so i'm not getting a, a, a ucf 20 loom and you've got a, a ucf 10 engine because that's there's a bit more involved if i do that and i can do it but there's a bit more involved so step one is i want your wiring harness sent to me and i like to get your ecu as well and then I can test it and run it. So in this particular case, the customer sent me the ECU, that one. I've checked the numbers, match with the wiring loop, and I actually found some corrosion. There was some bit of rust, bit of ugliness on that ECU. So I've checked it. I have actually started that one this morning, and it ran up fine, so we're good on that. Now I normally uh, do the testing and starting up at the, at the other end, at the, once it's up and running. But I've been using this one for a bit of a sort out um, and been testing it. And because I was suspicious of that ECU, I wanted to know that it was good to make everything so I could inform the man that it was good and we were moving forward. I'm also using this loom for a series of other videos. Now for the guys that have got some skills themselves, I sell a set of wiring instructions. They're a really well-priced option for you guys that wanna do your wiring yourself. The next option I offer is a set of relays and fuses for some models. And that's just a plug-in setup to get it in, works with, a standard loom and I'm expanding my range of those all the time as just a plug-in option it's something that I've made the whole time for the jobs that come in and I build them to suit each job but I've sat down and worked out the most common ones so I'm able to offer a couple of solutions for guys and if this relay box suits their application then it's going to be a effective option for getting them up and running and I've got plans to do some autos as well ones for auto setups um, the present one just has a, a universal type uh, 8 pin plug on it like that and the other ones will be coming with the factory plug-in as a true plug-in and of course the price will alter for each option The next option which we're talking about here is universal looms, where you send me it and I modify it to suit your job. After that, going forward, I will be offering brand new looms. Of course, that'll be a, a higher price. And then aftermarket ECUs, which up until now I make, but they're all custom to everybody's job. But I'm gonna make some off the shelf basic ones for again, like a universal aftermarket to suit as many applications as I can. And then if I, if the particular one that I make doesn't suit your application, then it will be a custom for you. And the plan is to make some of the first ones, which I've already done a few of, as a left hand or right hand application. So this one loom will do the world's different vehicles. Once you see videos of them come available, then we can start discussing that a bit more. Right now, 
universally. So he sent me this UCF 20 wiring loom. And I'm going to pull it apart. I'm going to refab it. And I'm going to put it back on this engine and run it up. This particular job is going to be a, going to be a manual. So we're going to pop the transmission loom out of it. So this loom here is leaving. We, we won't take that one. That's the auction sensor. We'll skip that. So past there, it's all coming out of it. And I will be putting in a couple of wires for reverse lights. This one is traction control. So that's coming out. And the TPS plug, the sub-TPS plug is, is coming out as well. There will be a fan switch added, and the diagnostic box will be modified to plug in to uh, a scan tool. So that, that will, will work. This length here stays the same because I'm working with this loom. This system works really well if your wiring loom is in reasonable condition. I'm on all of them now, I put a new set of connectors. Unless they are absolutely amazing wiring looms. And I've seen, I've seen one this year and one last year. So in the last, already part way through the year, last 18 months at least, probably two years, I've had two that I didn't have to replace a whole heap of connectors on. So connectors are part of it. So I'm not just pulling some wires out and putting some relays on it. I'm replacing connectors and braiding it up and making it look really neat and tidy and checking it over and testing it on a running engine. Now I've done a lot of these, but I thought it might be important just to explain my process. So right now, I'm going to get into this wiring loom. Let me show you the wiring loom as it is now. And we'll show you what it looks like. Thanks to the magic of uh, video editing, we'll show you what it looks like at the other side. We'll see in this case here, I've already done some work on this one, because the man sent me a start loom. If I get sent the start loom, I will modify it accordingly. This one is a little bit longer than standard, because the man asked for that. So I've rebuilt it, replaced the knock sensor plugs, and um, changed it to suit his requirements. If I get a front crank harness, I will fix it to suit the customer's requirements. And that's what I'm doing. So this is what's happening as I'm doing this universal loom refab. So the loom comes apart. It's checked. Problem wires are replaced. And it's about to become naked and lose all its plugs. They are replaced as necessary. So not every plug is replaced. And that of course affects the overall price of the job. With the connectors, I pretty much work on the fact that if they come off nicely without shattering, then they might be able to go back on. But if I'm at all suspicious, I throw them away. Oh. Righto, so this loom has been apart. It's been all apart. And it now looks like this. We've got braided bits on it. The diagnostic box has been modified so it can talk to a scan tool. This is all braided up. Out to the igniters, which has been braided. To the airflow meter. All braided up. New connectors on it. 
This one I've changed where the oxygen sensors go, so they come down the back. And it's got heat proof stuff on it. So hot, I don't mind it sitting on the exhaust even. It, it'll handle it. Though mounted in place, we don't want it like that. There is a set of relays and fuses. Based on my standard set, but this one's got an extra plug that's been modified in just to suit this vehicle. There's a diagnostic connector here. Like so, very, very easy. And it plugs into a DLC2 if you've got one. If you put that extra plug on, or if you send a DLC2 to me, I will put the plug on so it talks. And there's this little extra connector. In here there is a, a reverse light 12 volt input, and a reverse light's out. Because he asked for me to put a reverse plug in it, reverse light plug in it. So we can build a little gearbox loom for that. There's a water temp. There's two, on this one, there's two oil lights. What I've done is, the standard, the front loom didn't come down with it. So he'll just whip this plug off, extend the wires down to the oil pressure, and whether which either one he chooses, he's either the blue, yellow, or the black, and that becomes the oil light. There's a check engine light. There's a taco output, a four-cylinder taco output that are from the igniters. So that's going to go to his dash. On this stuff, all he has to do is put his fuel pump on here. There's a fan switch. There's a little extension wiring because we've got a fan plug up here. It can go either way up to the top of the radiator. So the fan is on the end. He puts ignition switch in here. And he puts the factory start input, which needs to be a big one. If you've got a car with a small start input, then I'll put a start relay in. And then... Rum, rum, rum. Of course, this stuff just plugs in and plugs into the ECU. So that's how I do my universal loom with a refab and modification for a conversion. And I do a heap of these, heaps and heaps. It does rely on the loom that I'm sent being in reasonable condition. Okay? Injector plugs being broken as normal, but things hacked up and cut to pieces they get a bit marginal. With this job, I also did the start harness because the man supplied it and he asked me to, to, to sort that out. And that all affects the price. The final price is going to change depending on what I do. They pretty much all contain a fan switch. This one's got a couple of extra lugs for the alternator. Most setups I supply a brand new EFI water temp sensor. Because I'm not going to spend all this time doing a loom and have a sensor that's 25 to 30 years old let me down. Not that I see many fail, because I replace a lot of them before they fail. And they happen to be genuine Denso ones that I'm supplying. Not aftermarket of unknown quality. These ones I know are good. This video is also actually going to serve as the instructions for the man who's getting this particular loom. He knows I've done a few extra bits on it. We've got a little bit of a deal happening. And hopefully I'll get to drive his car because he's here in New Zealand. That'd be really cool. So just to recap, I sell instructions, wiring instructions. I've got plug-in relays and fuses for some models and that will extend. I do a refab and modification for conversion on standard looms. That's one of my biggest things that I do. And moving forward, if the loom is too far gone, then on some models, I will make brand new looms. 
if it's just not practical to use the factory one anymore. And aftermarket wiring systems as well, custom for your requirements. So I hope that's been helpful. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.